oh my gosh, testing the cable car, and guess what? The brakes go out. Jack Kirshen was on the back of that cable car. It crashes into the side of Marvel Cave. He is injured, broken bones, or some... All right, I'm so excited to take you on a driving tour of Branson, Missouri, but I'm not gonna just do it all by myself. I'm meeting my good friend, Terry Wayne Sanders, down here at the landing, because he knows so much history about Branson. He's been here forever, and uh, hey, hey Terry, come on in. He knows so much history about Branson, Missouri. I guess I need to unlock the doors and let him in. Come on in, Terry. <laughs> Helps if I unlock the door, I guess. sure does help, doesn't it, buddy? Hey, Chris. Well, we're so excited to have you here. I'm going to adjust this up just a hair bit there. For sure. Now, we are going to be taking them through all of Branson, all the history of Branson. What? But we are starting at the Branson Landing. And the reason I want to start here is because so many people are familiar. This Branson Landing's been here forever. Forever. But... It didn't start off that. How did this area start out? Okay, first of all, uh, Branson was really unknown. The big town a long time ago was Hollister, Missouri. That's where the big uh, train depot was. Everybody got off in Hollister. Oh. This was just a little bump uh, along the way. And then all of a sudden, uh, Branson started growing. You know, more people were moving into the area. And so uh, we had the White River right over here to the side us. Okay. This was not Lake Tanicoma back then. It was the White River. And people would float... Uh, trees they would cut that was a big market down here you cut down the trees white oak oh those were used primarily uh, sold for railroad ties oh wow right. and so people would float them down here and they would load them up here in branson then they would sell them to the railroad for i think and it was big bucks back then i want to say around 20 maybe 25 cents a piece because white oak lasts the longest. It was amazing. And all of a sudden we started growing more and more. So Hollister was, oh, okay. And now Branson was a hot spot. Now, wasn't this uh, ended up being a park area? Oh, this was goodness. a park for yeah. forever. Now, for where we're at right now, because this way we had on this side, we had things like uh, the Sammy Lane Pirate Cruise. We had all these little cozy little mom and pop uh, little cabins that you could stay for the weekend. Or, you know, many people a long time ago, Branson was not a one or two or maybe three day stay. It was a week, maybe two weeks people came down here and stayed that long duration because that's how vacationers were a long time ago let's have a real vacation and now we're in this fast pace hurry up let's get this done three days oh that's too long we got to get out of here type of thing but yeah we had all those little mom and pop places we had like i say the sammy lane pirate cruise a lot of fishing uh, was going on down here we had mr jim owen who at one time was the actual mayor of branson missouri but jim was known also for his fishing techniques and skills uh, you wanted to hire him because he was a fishing guide jim owen amazing that not jim owen that some of you might remember that would be jim owens jim owens who was a singer here in branson who passed away several years ago who was a fine entertainer did uh, hank williams uh senior i'll sing him quite well but no jim owen the, the, the fishing guide matter of fact you'll see downtown right over there the owen theater That's okay right. we'll go up that way in yeah, a second yeah that was a base of uh, um, jim owen and he was a very popular man everybody knew jim owen he was rather well known and beloved we got right through here. Now, also, right about where we're at, right through here, Chris, on this side, uh, this is where we had uh, one of the finest restaurants uh, that we'd seen in years called Dimitris. Dimitris, he is Greek, you see. And oh, it was, it was a floating restaurant. That was unheard of in Branson, Missouri, unless you're on a boat, you brought some bologna sandwiches, you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty exciting uh, you know, whenever you had these newer things coming into Branson as we evolved. And right about over there, Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Right around here. This is the actual park. Now, this was the city park owned by the city. We had uh, a swimming pool. Our boys came down here. They would swim. We also had the baseball field. Oh, my gosh. We had these little uh, handmade rock steps all through this area so you could sit and relax and enjoy the lake. But also the baseball field. Anybody who was anybody who had kids brought their kids to the downtown park. And this is where they learned swimming. This is where they learned baseball. This is where they learned how grandma can cuss. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good to know. That's my grandson. That's right. That's now it's all the Branson Landing, which is great and exciting, but it, it was nice. I'll tell you what, I do remember the, the Sammy Lane uh, where the pirates would come out and get you. Oh, yes. Actually, I probably don't remember, but I've seen video of me right. trying to hide the treasure. Oh, my gosh. So that was a great experience. Great experience. Now, here's the strange thing. Now, we have several restaurants on this side of the landing here at the Branson Landing, which I like to say it is beautiful. And it's interesting because this attracts so many people to Branson, Missouri. Some people uh, who are old school say, oh, it's the worst thing that ever happened. 
And this has brought so much revenue to the Branson area. And it really has been a good thing, a positive thing, to be honest with you. And uh, so we have several great restaurants here. But what I find interesting, we brought in Miss Paula D. Mm -hmm. She's well known for her culinary skills and all that good stuff. Uh, but they put in her restaurant right there. And we have this beautiful view of what was the White River. Now it's Lake Taney Como, named after, of course, Taney County, Taney County Missouri. Missouri. Exactly wow. right. See, Taney County, Missouri, Lake Taney Como. Anyway, her restaurant, her windows are on the front side. You don't get the view of the back. There's that place where they have the kitchens. Why would you want to miss that beautiful view? It's gorgeous. And, and uh, they all did that. They all are missing the view there. Yes, 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 exactly right. So, yeah, I find that very funny. It's like, who designed this? Oh my goodness. Oh my, yeah. Oh, hey, this is a whole new world. Wow. <laughs> All right, so we got the Branson Landing on here left here. Yes. We're going to make a ride across and go up uh, seven, uh, the 76 strip. Well, start the starting of the 76. Now, right here in front of us, the Branson Scenic Railway. That is the original train depot. Now, it has been modified somewhat, but portions of that are still the original train depot. Now, you said this purple building up here was an important part of oh Branson history. Yes, it is. Uh, believe it or not, uh, we had an actual bordello right here in Branson, Missouri. It's right there, that purple building. That's right. And why? Well, you know, uh, that's how things were back then. Uh, you know, not that it is now. No, it's not. But we also had the railroad coming here. Very busy hub. And so there was a, a business that was had. Someone, you know, said, okay, there you go. So you learned something about that <laughs> here in Branson, Missouri, of all things. Yeah, but now that wouldn't be passed through city council, I don't think. I don't think they passed that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> now, we're heading up through the old downtown Branson. Yes, we are. Now, matter of fact, straight ahead, right there it says the Parnell Building. This is vital. The Parnells moved here in the early 1900s and put in the very first Bank of Branson, which is right across the street. Bank of Branson, okay? Anyway, oh my goodness. Uh, they were amazing. They were uh, industry people. They were uh, concerned about the area. They had compassion. Uh, let's fast forward from that 1900s time period to about 1955. Hugo Hershen and his family, Mary and their two sons, Jack and Peter Hershen, moved to Branson. They'd been here in 1950 and they loved spelunking. That means going into the caves. And they found Marvel Cave because it was open. It wasn't called Marvel Cave back then. No, 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 no. Marble Cave. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, so in 1955, uh, the Hershens decided they're going to get the lease on the land and they're going to convert that area over there where the Marble Cave was. Well, Hugo falls over with a heart attack and dies. He is now dead. So Mary, the widow, and her two sons, they bury father, the husband, and then they come down to the bank and they talk to Mr. Ben Parnell, who was the president of the bank, Chris, the president of the Bank of Branson back then. And uh, they uh, got a loan, which is pretty almost unheard of because, oh, it's arcing. People are outgoing and friendly. Well, the Hershen family, they were from Chicago. Not that they were rude, but they were just not friendly and outgoing. And so for a bank president who's a smart man, who reads people and says, can I trust them? Are they nice? You know, do I want that in my town or community? And he had faith in their dream because they explained to Mr. Parnell what uh, Hugo's vision was. And that was to create this wonderful cave that would be more accessible, that would bring tourism to the area. Guess what? He loaned him $17,000 over those several years. Wow. We went through the $17,000. We upgraded Marvel Cave. We even fixed a brand new exit to the cave. Now, this is pretty wild. Um, they had to, they, they had, of course, the, the uh, survey of the cave. Where does it flow? How deep is it? How far above the ground? All this stuff. Well, they found one of the smaller places where it was closer to the ground, so they dynamited the exit, the now exit of Marvel Cave. Big enough hole, and they had, you know, they do somehow, they take uh, like a metal spike and they drive through, and so, ah, it came through. This is gonna be the place right here. That's what they thought. Well, uh, whenever they dynamited it off, they were off just about, I wanna say maybe six inches where they really wanted it to go. So that's pretty amazing to be that far off, I mean, that close to what they wanted, the proximity. So we decided we're gonna put in a cable car system, and it's uh, a two-way, two cable cars, and it's counterbalance. So the weight of one cable right, car right, would pull up the other. Pull up the other. Up. Right. Oh, earthquake. Earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, so we uh, construct a cable car that would work on either side. We had a man who had no more than an eighth grade education. An eighth grade education, and because they were told that okay, that's the cable car is going to go around a corner, a curve. Cable cars don't do it. it's straight in, straight out. You yeah. cannot do that. That is 
physically impossible. This man sat down there with a pencil and goes, here's what we're going to do. Here's how you're going to do this. They did it, and it worked, and it wow. still works to this day. That is unheard of. That's I mean, amazing. It really was. Now, they're testing the, the cable car. Oh, my gosh, testing the cable car, and guess what? The brakes go out. Jack Kirshen was on the back of that cable car. It crashes into the side of Marvel Cave. He is injured, broken bones, or some blood, uh, but he survived it. He's alive today. He's now 90 and a half years of age and still wow. prospering, doing well. And so, yeah, you never know. Oh, now, you Chris, said up here. Yes. Oh, this is exciting. When we came here in the, the early 60s, downtown, that was the main road. That was Highway 65. There was no four lane. There wasn't. Oh, this wow. This was the main thoroughfare. You had to cut through Branson to go down into Arkansas. So that light lamp, we were on the light, we were that stopped light, at. We were just at, oh, my gosh, this was the hub. And that also dog people right here. It was like, what's Branson? They found out real quick. And so there was a big, big billboard right there it said silver dollar city eight mountain miles what's a mountain mile compared to a regular mile i don't know it was an advertising boy what's a mountain mile basically you're going to go up some hills not mountains because we don't have mountains here but yeah and so there was a, a, a picture depicted on that billboard this profile of a prospector a big hat and a pick in his hand now a lot of people said that was shad that was not really shad that was a prospector because we were a mining town silver dollar city uh, because we were mining guano out of marvel cave marvel cave so there you are. And now, as we came up that hill just now, I remember seeing all these little homes, little shanties, if you will, cute, quaint little places, and people saw traffic come in, people wanting to look around and shop. And so you saw a lot of products, handmade products, pottery, you know, that they made themselves or were brought in, uh, wood uh, houses, you know, like birdhouses, things like that. Amazing things. So people were making money right off the bat in the early 60s. Wow. They were a tourist drawn town and trying to create more interest, trying to have people stay here and leave those wonderful dollars, you know. So there you go. Vacation dollars, if you will. Or, you know, that's amazing. Right now, now this is also odd too. We are driving over right now, Highway 65. This was not a drive over. This, there was no underneath here. This was just, this was it. Wow. Yeah, there were small houses along through here. Uh, now, as you look up the street, Yes. The 76 strip now makes a left, but it looked like the road used to go straight. Is that correct? Uh, well, you know, the conjecture. It always has curved this way, all this way, but it's been modified several times. Now, if you take a right, I want to show you one of the original farm homes. Right here? No, 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 no. That's not right. Not, oh, yeah. right. How about this one here? Okay, better, how about this yeah. one here? Because people okay. get mad if they go in the garage. Oh, that's yeah. probably true. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this was a farming community, uh, very small. In 1909, a family moved right here into Branson, and all this was all farmland through here, okay? And this quaint little home that you see right here. I'm gonna pull into. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Someday. It was a farmhouse. Now, we see a lot of these mammoth oaks, okay? Some of these oaks, that's probably 150 years old right there, and there's even bigger ones down through here, even the walnut trees that are older than that, maybe 200 years old. Anyway, and so this little farmhouse was quaint and wonderful, and now it is known as Grandma Beulah's Airbnb. Oh. Owned by Miss Dee Dee Sanders herself, and she even lets her husband clean it. Oh, well, that's nice of her. Isn't that nice of her? But she this was one of the original it. farmhouses. It is one of the original farmhouses, and around here, not only do we have these oaks and those trees like that, but we were plentiful with pines. Ooh. I mean, there are pine trees throughout this area, and now every now and then you'll see some, like you can see some tops of them right over there and right over there. But uh, the, some of the flooring in that home, that they're pine floors. That pine was harvested right here on this property but yeah back behind us there was maybe two other farmhouses otherwise that we had cattle over here we had pigs we had chickens and that all changed my friend and that's called the Cantwell edition right there the Cantwell family now, as we go up the strip right here, uh, oh my goodness. Now, Godfather's Pizza. Okay, little known fact, I'm going to tell you right now. The world's best fried chicken anywhere in Branson, Missouri, Godfather's Pizza. Honest it to is. Them, hands down. Pizza's great, but let me tell you what, fried chicken, best, hands down. Mm -hmm. But it used to be, that was a Burger King. That's Burger right, King. a that Burger was... King. Yes, it was. And right here we have, of course, welcome to the Ozark sign. And then, of course, this wonderful tribute to our veterans. It's a veteran's garden. There's a rumor that that's a veteran's garden because supposedly there are some graves of some Civil War uh, uh, soldiers buried there. Now, this is rumor only, but uh, we have never disturbed that. And we put all those things there in, in memoria, uh, memoriam, or memorial to those fine folks. Interesting. 
All right, that little rock house right there, this whole area right here. Two little old ladies, two little spinster ladies owned all that property. And they had, okay, we might slow down. I gotta tell you a story about this. Okay. Chris, this is great. Uh, those ladies were landlords. They had a little trailer court back there, but they had this antique shop. Oh my gosh, all sorts of great antiques. And Matt, Pat, pull in here, because we got time about this place too, because it's for sale. Anyway, oh my gosh, Chris, this is wonderful. Uh, those little old ladies, they didn't make a whole lot of friends because, you know, they just were business minded, I guess. And they weren't really friendly or happy people. But uh, some uh, evil people, some bad people, I guess, if you want to call them that, they um, found out that the ladies were going to be gone for about a week. Well, they had a plan. They had a plan like you cannot believe. Once they saw the ladies leave, well, listen, here comes my ride. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so once they saw the ladies leave, they went in there. They picked the locks of their home. This is terrible. As well as the locks of the antique shop. And then they put up signs that says, auction on Saturday. They sold tons of their personal belongings, all the antiques that they could. It was cray cray. So the ladies come back and oh my gosh, so the place has been broken into. All their things are gone and rummaged through. Uh, they did find the people and all, there was a little bit of restitution, but some of the antiques, uh, there was no paperwork. No, no, it's yours. That, that's cash only. Thank you. No, no, no checks. There. So, yeah, pretty amazing. Now, this parking lot that we're driving in right across, just right up the street from there, this used to be a shopping center. The shopping, the uh, what, Branson Heights Shopping Center. We had, well, there was a sewing shop here. They sold material. Uh, we had Mr. Gary's Cofures. That's where my grandma Jill got her haircut. My Aunt Luana. Oh, everybody came over here. We had a Ken's Pizza house right here. Ken's Pizza was right here. Then that became Mazio's, uh, but they still had. And this is great. They still had a lot of Ken's boxes, so they used Ken's boxes. Is that great? <laughs> smart. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Amazing. Now, right across the street over here, let's see. Yeah, on the left-hand side, as you can see, uh, where the mu mu uh, Veterans Museum is now, guess what? That was the Jesse James Museum and Motel. Oh, my gosh. That museum was full of Jesse James memorabilia. And also, they had a big side over here that you go down on burlap bags. And they had a big horse. This horse was on these hydraulics type of thing. And that horse would rear up and come back down. Rear up, up. And kids, that was really funny to spray paint the underneath of the horse. That horse has, I think they said the last call was 2,341 coats of paint on its underneath. That's true. It's all true. Now, this building right here, this is interesting. Oh, my gosh. Blue Jeans. Can you say that with me, Chris? Blue Jeans. Blue Jeans. Blue Jeans. Last night, Blue Jeans. What was Blue Jeans? Blue Jeans was a souvenir-making uh, company. It was like a factory. I mean, you can, well, you can see this, the size of this building. They made all sorts of... Uh, memorabilia, uh, souvenirs for Branson as well as other, you know, Branson area uh, outlets and all that. And so it was that way for many, many years. Well, there was a man at Silver Dollar City, Peter Hershey. Uh, well, not Peter Hershey. Uh, they looked a lot like, but Peter Engler. Peter Engler was hired by Silver Dollar City as a wood carver. It was his brainstorm to uh, start and create the Fall Craft Festival because he saw the viability of that. That would bring in more people during the fall, but it was kind of slow. And so he did quite well over the years, Peter did, because he made some amazing carvings. He was really quite well known. Well, he bought out Lou Jeans and he created what was called Engler's Block. Wonderful. Engler's Block. I mean, it was a hub. Uh, again, all sorts of souvenir things here, but also he featured craftsmen from around the area, artists, painters, all the, all right there. They even had uh, a little small restaurant back there and of course a place for live musicians. They could come here and perform. He made it like a miniature Silver Dollar City all under one roof. Crafters, because that's how Silver Dollar City was started. It was crafts. They had, of course, the cave. They had the steam train and the, uh, the uh, stagecoach. But that was it, you know, at first, you know. But this is isn't the original building, is no, it? Tornado. Tornadoes have got the other part of it over here. Then, yeah. of course, uh, well, of course, now Peter sold that out, and then, of course, it became this, and the tornado hit. Then now it's uh, now the uh, auto museum. Not the original auto museum, mind you, but... Yeah, we'll museum. see that in a minute. Now, right here, this is where the first pizza hut was put in by Mr. Gary Clausen, okay? He built that thing and did quite well. Uh, he had a lovely niece. Her name was Dee Dee Edwards. Dee Dee Edwards soon to become Miss Dee Dee Sanders. That's right. That was the first pizza. And this was uh, the Holiday Inn. So, oh my gosh, whenever uh, pizza hut closed down, you went over to Holiday Inn because there was a bar over there. Let's keep on having a good time. So there you are. Over here on the left-hand side, Hertz Donuts, and it hurts if you eat too many. This, oh, 
this is exciting. This was a shopping center right here, small. We had, uh, let's see, the Gingham Goose. Uh, we had, of course, Billy Bob's Dairyland over here. That was fun. Uh, then also there was a little club here, a nightclub, uh, called the Down Under. That was a local bar where all the locals went. Dolly Parton Stampede. Oh my gosh, you're missing stuff, buddy. We're missing a great history out here. That was not always Dolly Parton Stampede. No, 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 no. There was a restaurant there called the Copper Penny. And just down below, that was one of the first barbecue places called Adam's Rib. Adam's Rib. Skate World has been here for years. Honest to goodness, been here for years and still going strong. There you are. Over here on the left-hand side, what is now the Apple Tree Mall and uh, the music store and things like that, the yeah, Apple Tree Plaza. Yeah, that was um, Consumers. It was a, a, a grocery store chain from Springfield, and they did quite well from years and years and years. And, of course, right here, uh, this uh, theater, God and Country, this was the first movie theater in France. Well, okay, not the first. It was the more updated one. Owens Theater downtown that we talked about a while ago. That was a movie theater sometimes also, but always very young. Live performance movies. But that is the newest one of the movie theaters that was put in in the mid 70s, I guess, somewhere like that. Over here, oh my gosh, this whole complex, this just throws us for a loop. Okay, right about where this building is right here, the back of that building right there, Wayne's Restaurant. Wayne and his wife, Jane, they were great, great home cooking. Uh, they had the best food, and I mean, it was always packed out. Always packed out. This was the hot spot. Also, this was called the fun spot. We had a carnival type rides, a little small Ferris wheel, the merry-go-round, tilt of world stuff like that. This was the end spot to come here on weekends, bring the kids, mom and dad, let's all have a good time. We'll go to Wayne's, have supper, then we'll go over here, have cotton candy, caramel apples, and all this. This building on the right hand side, which is now Grand Country. It is grand because they got a lot of grand things going on over here. This was the original Walmart building the Walmart building, okay? And if you go in there to the theater to see great shows, you know, in that building, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, sometimes if you're in the back, you're gonna have a pole, a metal pole, blocking your view, just unless you turn your head like this, because it's a Walmart building. It's a Walmart building. That's right, that's right. Now, once that sold out, because they got new land over here, built the brand new Walmart, oh my gosh. Well, this place was empty. Mr., uh, oh my gosh, oh, we've got to talk about that. So many things to talk about. Oh, you're, you're just driving too fast. Sorry, sorry, I gotta go slower. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta go slower here. Anyway, uh, what's his name? I'm trying to remember now, I'm talking about him and his lovely wife. Uh, yes, uh, Glenn Robinson. Glenn Robinson and his wife, uh, delightful people, uh, they bought out this whole complex. They had a small shop right here. And this is where they would go down to Mexico, buy all that pottery, come up here and resell it. That's how they were able to create Grand Country. I mean, it was amazing for a long time. Many people, uh, the uh, fashion for homes was that Hispanic look. Oh my, the black Naga high chairs with the wood on it, and then those big vases and things like it was amazing. Lamps with a it was incredible. Even Elvis paintings, okay, on black velvet. They sold those here. This was a big time thing. Now, in the same complex right here were the first helicopter rides of rents called the Whirly Birds. The Whirly Birds. That's where you would get on a helicopter and fly over these Ozark Hills. Wow. Pretty fun. Now, you want to point over here. Now, this used to be a uh, uh, J, was it JJ's? I think it was JJ's. JR's. 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 That's right. JR's uh, lit, was it called Little Texas Motel. And this was the popular place everybody went here. It was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, it was wonderful. And then, of course, you know, as you know, we had the tornado things went through here and took out the place. So there you are. Now, I really have Shoney's again. Shoney's was hit by that tornado, also taken down pretty badly. Now they moved the Walmart, I guess, just all across the street and up the strip a little yeah, bit. Strip. Just put it in a cart and they all pull it push their own carts right over here. Moved all their stuff over. Yep. And the Branson City M M Mall, I mean, that's been opened and closed 400,000 400,000 times. times, yes, it has. Now it's still living, which is really sad because it's a prime market. You've got the Price Chopper right there. you got Walmart you right there. You think you'd do well? You would think so because uh, I even did a show there with uh, the Branson Brothers uh, many years ago before you hired me. Right here, this used to be what we called uh, the water chute. There was a water slide. Oh, the, the very water first, chute, the yes. water, It was the first water slide in town. And then right beside that, right over here, was the Foggy River Boys. That's right, the fourth show in town. Fourth show in town. The Foggy River Boys. They had a show over in Kimberling City. Then they caught on to the fact that, hey, Branson is growing. Forget Kimberling. Let's move over here. Yeah, matter of fact, just down below that, uh, where the Foggy River Boys were, and you had that cool-off water chute, there was another theater that went in around 1983. It was called Banjo's 
dinner theater, the first dinner theater in Branson, Missouri. Tim Cagle was known as Cousin Zeke, and he was the comedian for the Wilkinson Brothers, and then he was just uh, became the musician because uh, Dan Embry became their comedian, and then Dan Embry uh, got with Tim Cagle, and they said, let's go into this dinner theater thing together. So Dan left the Wilkinson Brothers in 1983. I joined them. I was with them until they shut down in the, what, July of 1987, but that was an original uh, dinner theater right there, big old metal building, and then it became several other things. Oh my gosh, uh, even Clay Cooper was there, which is pretty amazing. And he built his theater right there, and he won awards for his uh, theater design because he hired real-life architects who also understood live theater. And so they invested a lot of money. And he uh, did not buy a house. Uh, his dressing room, this is all true, 1,500 square feet. He lived in his dressing room while they were building his home over here at Point Royal. Now, a little tidbit about his home. Uh, he called up his ex-wife, was it Claudine? Claudine, Claudine, who lived over in Colorado. And they were still friends, even though they had divorced. Claudine, oh, Claudine, would you go down to that creek behind her house, get some of those rocks, those round rocks. Get a box of them and mail it to me. So she did. And he goes, he got him. and he goes, oh yeah, this, this is what I wanted. So he told his architect, I want the front of my house here being built to have this, all these rocks. So they had a company go down there to that creek, get as many of those round rocks as he could, and so they put up the facade of his lovely home over there in, uh, of course, Point Royale. Now over here on the left-hand side, oh my, there, this has got some varied history. This was just flat land. There was nothing over here. I believe it was the Caulfield family that owned most of the land over on this side of uh, Highway 76. And so uh, this was sold uh, to, of course, uh, Silver Dollar City, they purchased it uh, because we put in what was called the Grand Palace, and it was grand, everybody. Now, you see the, the, the building sort the of building still there. still there. We don't have the front facade of it. They took uh, that all down, but now it was very interesting because we spent a lot of money on the Grand uh, Palace. Uh, we ran out of money, and the only thing left to do, because it was all concrete, we said, ah, oh, we don't need acoustic tiles. Why would we want that? And uh, sometimes we have to learn the hard way. Uh, the first weekend that we opened up the Grand Palace, because we had all the big stars. We had uh, uh, Glenn Campbell, we had Kenny Rogers, we had you know uh, Louise Mandra, all these names, and bigger names came after that, but you know, we wanted them to be our headliners. And uh, oh my gosh, word was out, don't go. It echoes so badly. So we, Silver Dollar, had to go back in uh, with all those uh, lifts, if you will, and put in all sorts of acoustic tile to take care of the sound, which they did, but again, live and learn. Now, this uh, Castle Theater, Bobby Venton? Bobby Venton, yeah. Now it's called the Branson Variety Theater, okay? Yeah, uh, or uh, King's Castle. Or uh, King's Castle now. But for a while it was the Branson Variety Theater because we didn't want to take down the Bobby Venton initials, okay? <laughs> now, and the carpet had BV on it, so you had to, yeah. Exactly, yeah. so this makes sense. Now right over here to our right, over here where you see what looks like, a, a, what is that, it's a seafood place right now. It's something yes. in the restaurant. Doc, Dockers. Anyway, Dockers, Dockers. Dockers, thank you very much. Sir. Yeah. Dockside. Dockside. Oh, Dockside. Dockside, thank you. So, you're so smart. Right. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, we're, I always hydrate. You've got to hydrate. Great friends. Mm -mm. Over there, they put in a restaurant called McGuffey's. McGuffey's! They were the place. I mean, all the Bransonites went there because, I mean, they had great food. And McGuffey's was based off of that little uh, book called the McGuffey Reader. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a library. You went to a library. It was really kind of cool. Well, they got really uh, a little too big for the pants. They were so popular, they said, let's put in four more locations. Well, boom, there goes the market right there. It liquidated that, and so they went under. Now, across the street, we've got this humongous building. It looks like it has, well, it looks like the earthquake has really done damage here. That it picked up what's a building called Wonder Works, turned it upside down, and put it on top of a humongous log cabin. That was the Bald Knobbers Hillbilly Jamboree Theater for many, many years. Now, that was the second theater on the Strip. But now the first show in Branson would be the Bald Knobbers in 1959. They were performing down there on uh, Lake Taney Como, okay? And so that was the first show in town. But the first show on the Strip is just around the corner here that you can almost see from right here. You have to see the roof. The Presley's. The Presley put in the first thing. theater on Highway 76. Now, you said someone famous stayed Oh, this is hotel. exciting. Now, the theater that we are in, mm -hmm. the Americana Theater, yes. it's called Americana. Why? 
Mo Bandy. Mo Bandy, that's his signature song, Americana. Well, uh, he was great friends with, of course, uh, President uh, George Bush and his wife, Barbara. And so they came here and they stayed right here at this hotel, okay? And so it was pretty interesting because uh, Secret Service, they have a big job to make sure the President and Mrs. First Lady are all safe. So the room above them, they had put down metal sheeting on the floor below them. They put down metal sheeting in case there was some type of uh, situation that they would be protected and so they were at work and they decided well we're going to go see our friend Mr. you know uh, what's Mel Bandy name? Mel Bandy I was going to say Mel Gibson uh -huh. yeah it's been a long day anyway so yeah uh, Mo Bandy so they said let's not drive why take time with the, you know, oh, the car let's walk across the street so here we go the police secret service are everywhere and they walked across over here they sat on the front row of the uh, Mo Bandy theater the Americana and there we go and matter of fact we have never uh, cleaned those here we've never done anything those two chairs that they sit in those. So you can sit in the same chair that George Bush, I'm just saying, we, we've cleaned it, haven't we? we uh, yeah, yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah. A few times. And there it is, the Americana Theater, which yeah. right now we've got nine well, different that shows. Was, that was the Plumber, Plumber family. Now get this, I learned this from Randy Plumber the other day. Uh, Plumber family was there, they did not build that theater. There was another family that built that theater, and they were in existence for maybe about three weeks. Did not do well at all. Oh, you know? wow. Yes, and I forget their name. And so uh, Daryl Plumber and his wife Rosie said, let's buy that. And so, wow. and so they bought that, and it became the Plumber family. But that was not the original show in there. Now, speaking of original shows on this strip, here we go. To our left right now, you can see the Presley's Country Jubilee, Herkimer and the Gang. Uh, oh, my gosh. I forget how many generations are here because Lloyd and his wife, Bessie, were, of course, the mother and father of the boys and all of them. And so, yeah, we had at one time, uh, I want to say four, while Lloyd and uh, Bessie were still alive. Of course, they have now passed away. But now we've got Herkimer, also known as Gary Presley and Steve, the drummer. So, yeah, pretty amazing. Now, our lot's right over here, our theater, uh, that has been a little bit of everything, the Americana Theater, because, uh, you know, we had Jennifer in the morning. Well, Bill Daly, he found her, you know, because Bill Daly was a contractor. His wife was Janet Daly, the world-famous authoress, and so they did quite well. Matter of fact, the, the uh, last building that Bill built was over here, the uh, uh, Chinese Acrobats building, where the ball numbers are now, but I hear a rumor that the ball numbers are moving. Uh, maybe so. That's a, uh, you that's never a know. You never know. Gotta hear rumors. Yes, right. Rumor, rumor, rumors. rumors. Rumor, rumor. And speaking of rumors, right across the street from us, we have a new restaurant going in right now called Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Last year, what did we now this in? whole area was something different though. Cheddar's. Cheddar's Before Cheddar's, Chick Fil A, all this was. I remember this having uh, uh, ice cream shops and little oh, yes, little yes, areas yes. here. Yeah, right over there. In fact, on that area over there, mm -hmm. there was a big ship. A big ship that was a shopping mall. Shopping mall. Wow. That was right over there. Uh, Skipper D's, all sorts of great places right over there. It was amazing. Yeah, and on this property right here, I'm trying to remember what all was here originally because I know what you're talking about. But yeah, there's more businesses on this side that I recall. Now, you okay. You've heard other things. Well, I just remember seeing ice cream. Right. right. Oh, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know me. I mean, oh, well, when you, yeah. yeah. Well, sure, but yeah. you know the good stuff. Yeah. Let's put it that way. You do know good stuff. I well, mean, it was a good location right across from the Presley. Well, so sure. It makes Hello. Sense. It does make sense. Hand in hand. Oh, sure. And that's the way to do it. Now, the Presley's have tried different things over here. Matter of fact, over there where you see Landry Seafood, mm -hmm. uh, the Presley's put in a campground at one time. Oh, wow. And also they put in a restaurant called the Jukebox Restaurant. So they tried other things too. They wanted to look for options. Now, right about here was not where the tornado hit. And it was the, uh, the uh, Hall of Fame Museum and Hotel. Well, the tornado hit that plus also what else wasn't there a fire there there's a fire there so there's a fire that's what tore out the whole building right there now on the left here at the hollywood wax museum oh, 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 oh man this is great okay now down on the riverfront down below there you know the what's now called the landing uh before it was just downtown branson uh there was well originally was over in hollister the longs wax museum then they moved over there to lake tini Comor in branson and it was all these old trailer houses honestly and soldered together coat hangers Whatever it took to put them all together. Well, they decided that the strip is even a better place. So they moved all that over here where this lovely, amazing, and I do mean amazing, uh, wax museum is at now. And so you go in there, these old trailer houses, and all sorts of exotic scenes, you know, and some of them were okay, and some were like, oh my gosh. But they had one area where they had a 1962 
Cadillac limousine being driven by Mussolini. That's right. And inside there also was, uh, let's see, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis and Marilyn Monroe. Wrong combination right there if you know the history about that. And then they also had some depictions of Christ uh, during uh, different phases of his life. And one was the ascension whenever he rose from the dead on the third day and he's rising to the beautiful heavens above, you know, where you know, God will prepare a place for it. Anyway, and so a uh, beautiful painting in the background, you know, there's bright orange colors and red, you know, because you know, it's magnificent. He's up there with the sun. And, and so they also wanted some clouds. And so what makes really look good looking fluffy clouds that you don't have to paint? Corning insulation. <laughs> bright pink, bright pink. And I would go in there and you just, it's because I've worked with insulation. I mean, you guys probably have handled insulation or something like that at one time or another in your life. And oh my gosh, I'd always go in there. I'd go, I'm itching for Jesus. I'm itching for Jesus. Because here was Jesus all amongst that horrible, horrible insulation. Now, now right, oh, here's, okay. oh, right here, this is where they had like Skipperdees. There was that big uh, mall that looked like a ship. Okay. okay. And, and right here, wasn't there a hotel that was also a yes, ship? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, it was. It was like a, a riverboat type of thing river right boat. there. And then next to that, we had, of course, uh, a theater. Um, Starlight, but it, that's a, that was a, that was right before it turned to right, yeah. uh, Beyond the Lens. Yeah, what right, was right, before right. Starlight? Uh, I want to say we had uh, the Campbell family. I'm trying. I'm grasping for his name right now. He and his wife had put in a theater here, and this is where we had uh, the first one. We had the singing dentist, Mr. David Struble. David Struble. Uh, Carlotta Gale was in this show. Uh, it was just amazing, you know. But it was a country music show, and uh, the name. Came well, and speaking of country music, Clay oh Cooper. My gosh. Now, oh, this no, wasn't Clay Cooper's original theater. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me go. Well, let me go. remind me to about uh, Jack McDowell okay. auditioning for, of course, the Campbells. Okay. Jack McDowell's a friend of ours. He used to play Merciful Purpose III and a porter down in Echo Hall for years. He now works at the uh, Titanic Museum. Uh, Jack went to audition for Mr. Campbell over there at the theater because they were looking for a comedian. And he says, Well, you're pretty funny. You got a good look about you, but uh, would you uh, have your teeth removed? Because, you know, all branch of comedians don't have teeth. And Jack goes, mm, no. What? Can you imagine? That's Take, crazy. That is crazy. Now this building right here that we're looking at says Clay Cooper Theater, the CC right there. Uh, this was the Bobolinks, the Bobolinks Theater, friends. That's right. The now, Bob Bobolinks, that sounds familiar. And it was should. that Bob Mabe? Bob Mabe. Uh, the Mabe brothers came here. Uh, they uh, had regular jobs, real jobs, to be honest with you, uh, over in, well, they worked for a royal uh, typewriter company out of Springfield, Missouri. But they all were musicians as well. And so if someone gave them the idea, it was Chick Allen, who was uh, down at Silver Dollar City and said, you guys, you guys need to get your act together here and put together a show because I'm going to tell you, Branson's going to be the place to be. So sure enough, they put their act together. They started a show down there, uh, down on what's now called The Landing. And they also performed in, around the area too in other places like going Forsyth, you know, places like that. But uh, they built their theater over here where now it is Wonderworks and the Bob Number Jamboree. They were there for many years. Well, sometimes, you know, families break up and all that stuff. So Bob Mabe of the Mabe Brothers of the original four uh, he said, I'll build my own place. And so he built the uh, Bob O'Links, Bob O'Links Theater right there. And he had several guest stars. Matter of fact, they are the family, uh, Bob, uh, well, along with, of course, the plumbers. They were the ones that had a brainstorm to, let's bring in some big names. So they brought in Loretta Lynn. They brought in, you know, Ronnie Millsap, people like that. And they all did quite well. And they were happy. Those stars who came here were thrilled that Branson was such a great accommodating place. They took good care of them. The audience was already here. No promotion whatsoever at this boom you know they said Loretta's gonna be here they all packed out the place and then of course also they had hired Bob Links, Mr. Bob May hired the Texans the Texans have been around the area for some time a few years and this is if you might remember if you're from old school uh, there was a big tall guy out front on stilts he was dressed as a cowboy oh my goodness oh yes a J JD JD was his name and uh, JD caps and that was a, a ploy to get people's attention because he was also with of course uh, the uh, the Texans and so that was a big thing. Well, Bob sold out to them. Texans took over for a while. Then it was a, uh, I'm trying to remember what they called it, but it was an all-Christian show. Uh, it didn't last very long because mm -hmm. they made the statement that everyone here is a Christian, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, again, you have to have, as you know, 
deep pockets yes. for any show. And yes. be prepared to lose a, a million lot dollars. Yeah. A million dollars here, a million dollars there. And then it's transformed over several years. Osmond took over? Osmond took over right there. They had it for a long time. And then Clay Cooper, after uh, he left that little place down below, over there by the Walmarts store, uh, yeah, that left that theater and took over this place. And uh, he's been here for I don't know how many years, but he keeps doing better and better, you know. Of course, he also has uh, some class shows here. You know, he does uh, just like you guys do at the Americana Theater. Let's have more of a variety. Let's offer people more things and give other entertainers a chance to shine. Yeah, because Clay started off with Country Tonight as the MC, grew there, learned the Not show. Not even there. He didn't start there either. He came here as a kid from Texas, and they had uh, the Texas Gold Miners. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. He and, of course, uh, Joy Riley, uh, a whole bunch of those young kids are like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They came up from Texas and started the Texas Gold Miners, and then as they matured and went on their own ways. Yeah, but then you're right. He went over there and did, like you say, country tonight. How now, fun. Titanic didn't just land here. That was a arcade that I went to as a child. Oh, my gosh. You remember that? Yes, 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 yes. Now, over here on the left-hand side, where it says Pink Jeep Tours, mm -hmm. uh, Dee Dee's grandfather, Elmer, he used to haul gravel, okay? And there was a little uh, man there that he needed some gravel, so he, granddad brought him some gravel, and he says, now, Elmer, I'm sorry, but I, I can't pay you. And Elmer was like, oh, well, that's okay. You can get, get it to me, and you get it. Well, I'll tell you what, Elmer, I got this piece of property right here. I'll give it to you. Well, no, you keep it. Now it's worth millions of dollars. We're so mad at Grandpa. He's dead, but we're still mad at him, okay? Oh, my. Now, as we cross through this light, I'm realizing this is getting pretty long, and Terry has another 45 minutes of fascinating history. So stick around for part two, or click these other videos to learn more about Branson, Missouri.